Amendment 1 and to speak to the group as a whole. And, uh, at the outset of, of the further consideration stage, uh, the welfare reform debate, can I welcome the opportunity we have again to uh, seek amendments to the bill to mitigate against the worst uh, effects on, on some of the most vulnerable in our society. I, I, I welcome the fact that, as I understand it, there has yet been no uh, petitioner concerned, uh, concern to any of the amendments tabled, and I hope that remains the case. I, I, I think it means we can debate the amendments on, on their merits, um, and that those who oppose any amendments uh, will do so uh, for their own reasons, but without the cover of a petition of, of, of concern, which I think in the last stage um, put the emphasis on the DUP who tabled those petitions um, and to some extent provided cover for others who rejected amendments that in my view um, were signed and were in the best interests of uh, many vulnerable members of our society. Uh, amendment 1, then, Mr. Speaker, uh, is about a disability addition payment. Uh, currently, as the bill drafted, uh, many families with disabled children would see a loss of approximately £26 per week um, in, in, through, in their universal credit uh, uh, than they would have, under the, have received under the current uh, tax credit system. It's estimated that this would affect 100,000 families um, across the UK, um, and on a proportional basis, that would equate to approximately 3,000 uh, families here in Northern Ireland, although with our, our higher um, levels of disability claims, that there is the potential um, that, that that figure could be higher than the 3,000 families. In the previous stage, the Minister uh, stated that uh, the reduction in, in the lower rate payment uh, would enable those with more severe disabilities to receive a greater payment. Um, but that, for me, does not stack up as an argument when those on the greater payment would receive £2 per week more, which I am sure they would welcome. But I do not see how that uh, is, is a justification um, for families receiving a reduced payment of £26 per week, which will have a significant um, an impact on, on their family income. Uh, and this is where we come to, and we need to separate out, the issue of discretionary payments. Um, which no, no doubt will be used by some, uh, suggested by some that, that this could be mitigated against. And I suppose what I seek um, from the Minister and indeed from other parties, are they supporting this cut to the lower rate disability addition in principle? Or are they supporting it in this, uh, in, in this bill with the promise of a discretionary payment being made to those families to meet what some have said to date that no one will be worse off under this bill. Because there is no doubt that uh, as the bill is drafted, um, without any discretionary payments, um, then in the region of 3,000 families will be worse off as a result of, of, of this change. So I, I propose, um, as I did during the last stage, that we change the face of the legislation, that we give a commitment to those families that they won't be worse off, and therefore uh, we will amend the legislation accordingly um, to make sure of that. But at the very least, I would seek an assurance from the minister and uh, from other parties uh, on the executive um, that should the should the bill not be amended, that um, they today give a commitment that these families are compensated through the discretionary payments and that they um, receive the benefit of those who have made the commitment to say that no family will be worse off as a result of welfare reform in Northern Ireland. Amendment 15, Mr Speaker, is to proposal to set a time limit um, by which PIP uh, assessments are made and, and claims uh, honoured. 
We have seen the shambles, I think is the, is the right form of word to use, the situation in England, whereby after 16 months of PIP imitation, only 40 per cent of cases had been, claimed, or had been cleared, with many claimants waiting uh, as long as six months, or indeed longer in some cases. Uh, for a decision to be made on, on their claim. The, the government in the UK has now given a commitment um, that they, they will get the, the, the time delay down to 16 weeks. And my amendment uh, proposes that we should set a limit of 16 weeks for such decisions to be made in, in Northern Ireland. That is still, let me be clear, that is still too long. 16 weeks to wait on a decision on a claim uh, for, for people with serious disabilities and needs of support. That is still too long, and I think it should be the minimum commitment that we give that 16 weeks is the longest that any claimant should have to wait um, from their, their lodge of a claim until they, they receive a decision. That, to my mind, allows the Department the time to introduce the system and to iron out the cracks. I would hope going forward that, uh, that, that no one is waiting 16 weeks, but it does allow the flexibility in the interim period and the transition period um, for the department to get the processes in place and, and to deal with any backlog. I think the uh, amendment passed in the last stage to allow for a pilot scheme should allow the department um, the, the ability to test the systems um, uh, on a smaller scale um, and to ensure we don't have the mess um, that was experienced in GB with many vulnerable people, many people with disabilities having to wait uh, an extraordinarily long time um, to, to have their claim assessed, their decision made and to receive um, their, their, their payments. It is not acceptable that we expect people with disabilities uh, to, to suffer to fit a change in the system. The change in the system must work for the people um, with disabilities and must meet their needs, um, not, as I say, the other way around. Uh, Amendment 17, uh, which uh, has been tabled by, uh, jointly by the, the Green Party and the SDLP is in relation to the independent advice duty, a uh, duty on the department to ensure that independent advice is freely available to those uh, seeking to access benefits. Uh, we heard in the last stage um, the, the issues facing um, the East Belfast Advice Centre, and there are advice centres across Northern Ireland who are facing increased demands, um, in part due to, to concerns and uncertainty um, around welfare reform, and there's no doubt um, if and when this legislation passes that, that uh, they will see a surge um, in, in demand for their services. Um, but what they won't see, um, or certainly what appears unlikely, is that they will see uh, an increase in their support they receive from government to meet that demand um, that is a result of changes made by this government. Whilst I recognise that the Minister has his own amendment in, uh, placing a statutory duty to provide free advice, um, and I, I will certainly listen uh, to his, his explanation of how that will, will work in practice, I think it is important um, that it is independent advice for, for a number of reasons. Um, Firstly, if it's simply the advice that's already given um, by our social security offices, um, every MLA in this House will know how inadequate that provision is were it not for the support of the likes of Citizens Advice and Advice NI and other organisations. The effect is that the, the staff in the social security offices do not have the time to sit down with individual claimants to support them through their claims. Um, and to see that process through, for example, if they have to go for appeals, etc. Et, et um, otherwise, and I, I see the minister shaking his head, and I, I, I do. I, I'll give way. I think the member.